Tommy, it's Bob and Tony here in our Connecticut studio. It's an honor to have you on the show, Tommy. Good evening, Tom. How are you? We're doing very well, and it's so nice to hear your voice, and uh, we can't thank you enough for your cooperation and, and willingness to come on. Uh, thank you so much, sir. We We're just honored. went over a lot of your background, Tommy, while waiting, and it, it was uh, it's just an honor to have you on the show. I have to tell you a short story, Tommy. I had a, fam a, a, a reunion of some childhood friends yesterday at a ballpark, a minor league ballpark here in New Britain, Connecticut, and one of them, Jimmy, is a, was a major, major Dodger fan, uh, probably for over 40 years now. And I kind of surprised him, telling him that I'd be talking with you tonight. And uh, it was, he almost became emotional, Tommy. He said, Mr. Lasorda, my favorite Dodger manager of all time, my favorite Dodger of all time. And uh, he just wanted to thank you. Uh, and I'll thank him. I'll thank you on his behalf for making his life uh, a joyous, and he's still a Dodger fan to this day. Well, good. That's nice to hear. Well, again, we can't thank you enough, and uh, we went over a lot of your background, Tommy. And I want to people associate you with such as a Dodger, but I want to go back to uh, your days in Pennsylvania, Tommy, uh, back in Norristown, PA. I people. Right. Don't, realize you know you growing up in the 30s and 40s uh maybe you want to tell us how you became interested in baseball and maybe some of the early heroes that you looked up to tommy well uh, i i was interested in baseball i guess when i was about seven years old mm -hmm. and i we never had little league or any of those leagues in my hometown norristown pennsylvania the only thing we had was a neighborhood team, and we'd go play other neighborhood teams. Mm -hmm. That was about it. So we did not have any uniforms. We didn't have any balls. We didn't have any bats. We some somebody had summoned up a broken bat, and we used that taped up, and mm -hmm. we used baseballs that we, that we had to retape with black tape and everything like that. So that was uh, my beginning of really getting interested in baseball. Mm -hmm. As much as I heard on the radio about the major league teams and the players and so on. Yes, and um, we talked about, Tony and I talked about the extensive career you had before you even made it to the big leagues, Tommy, in 54. Um, and uh, people don't realize that you actually – Pitched in 1948, you pitched a 15-inning game where you struck out 25 batters? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no pitch the counts there. Run in the bottom of the 15th inning. <laughs> no pitch counts, Tommy, that night. Huh? No pitch no counts. No pitch counts. Said. <laughs> yeah, I threw five. I figured Bobby Valentine and I tried to figure out how many pitches I made. <laughs> With the bases on balls and the strikeouts and everything, so I must have thrown close to three hundred pitches. <laughs> oh, we could only laugh at that. It's it's it's. And so never great. had a sore arm. Never had a sore arm, and and we had mentioned Tommy, you pitched four games for the '55 World Champion Brooklyn Dodgers. Maybe you want to right. share some quick memories of Ebbets Field and some of those incredible champion mm -hmm. players, uh, teammates that you had with you. Well, well, I, you know, I, the greatest team that was in the major leagues at that time for many years, Campanella catching the Hodges on first, mm. Jackie Robinson on second, Pee Wee Richard short, Billy Cox at third, and, and Junior Gilliam, and uh, Amaros in left field, and Duke Snyder in center field, and uh, Carl Frill in right field. That was a team of great talent. Sure was. And uh, to be even on the team was uh, such a thrill and an honor for me. And uh, again, for our television audience out there, we are honored to have legendary Dodger manager Tommy Lasorda on the phone. Tony, question. And Tom, this is such an honor. You know, I've been watching you ever since the 1974 World Series when you were cheering for Jimmy Wayne yelling, go can it, go can it. And I'll never <laughs> forget it. But I wanted to talk to you about um, your time in Cuba. And you had several discussions with the Commandante, Fidel Castro, about Cuba. 
and uh, you were, right. and you were even managing down there during the takeover, and now we see this normalization of relations and the fact that Cuba may be open again, and uh, baseball talent may be coming into the United States. You spent so much well, time. I knew, I knew, but I, I played down there. I wasn't the manager. I was manager in the Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. but in Cuba, I played there. I played about four or five winners there. So what do you think about the uh, the opening of Cuba now and the fact that we might see Cubans in the major leagues? I don't like I don't like the uh, uh, joining with them. They they're communists. Hmm. The Castro brothers are. The, this one is worse than the older brother. Hmm. This guy and uh, and I talked to a lot of my friends who are ex Cuban. Residents are now in the United States, and they don't particularly think that's great for the United States to to partner uh, with Cuba. So yeah, I'm going to go with them, what they say and mm -hmm. uh, what they do, because they they've done it. They were there, and they knew all about it. So their word will be very very important to me. And as we talk to Tommy Lasorda, we have pictures at uh, various stages of his career on the TV screen. And, and Tommy, you were a scout for the Dodgers from the early to mid-60s before you started managing at the minor league level in 66. Uh, I was just wondering, all those days scouting and evaluating talent, Tommy, did it ultimately make you a better manager? Well, yes, uh, because I was able to judge I learned how to judge ball players mm -hmm. as a scout, looking at young players play and uh, seeing their deficiencies and their strong points. And you know, at that time there was no, there was no draft, right. and um, I, I I I gave Willie Crawford a hundred thousand dollars to sign, and that was the highest bonus that I ever gave out mm -hmm. at that time. And uh, he 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 was an outstanding ball player, and he played the big leagues about fifteen years. Hey, yeah, fine Dodger, very good player. And and in '73, you became the third base coach under Walter Alston. And and of course, Tony and I were talking, Tommy. We remember you being mic'd up on the NBC telecasts, and your enthusiasm would just come over the airways. It was so infectious, and uh, it, didn't, it, it didn't seem back then, Tommy, that uh, many Dodger players uh, needed uh, any kind of, to get their heads in the game, not when you were in third base, uh, in the third base <laughs> box. <laughs> well, I kept them alerted. That's what I had to do, yeah. and I enjoyed it. I used to go out, even when I became the manager, I would go out and coach a lot, a lot of times coach third base, maybe to get my club livened up a little bit or something like that but Boy. i would do it and i enjoyed it so i, I did i did it and uh, hopes that i'd bring them players up to play to their, their their potential oh and it it, it showed yeah, you did it showed uh, you again did. uh we're honored to be joined by tommy lasorda tony another question and tommy you know uh, today in baseball we have the replay rule and i couldn't help thinking as I was preparing for this interview with Bob, that um, in 1978, when Reggie kind of gave that little hip to the ball, uh, what the yeah. replay rule would have done, how do you feel about it? You think it has a place in baseball being the replay rule? No, I don't like it one bit. Mm. I, I think it holds up the game, and uh, it's, not, it's not right. The umpires make very, very few mistakes. And uh, they're, uh, they're I don't know. I just don't like it. I think it interferes with the playing of the game. And, and yet another thing, all I hear is the slow the game down. Why? Well, how can you slow the game down? That's what I want to know. Mm. And everybody says that uh, uh, the people want the, they want the game to go faster. I, I managed the Dodgers for 20 years. I never received one letter telling me that the games were too long. <laughs> Look, we think back when we used to have double headers. The people loved to go see two games in one day. True. What the heck are you talking about? And if you give the fans 
you give the fans exciting teams, that's great. They love it. Uh, they they'll stay till the end, and that's that's the thing about it. I think it's wrong to to even think about changing the trying to make the game go faster. You can't do that. Yeah, it's, and it's that's not that's, it doesn't need to be changed. Yeah, it, uh, well, there's a baseball purist. We we liked it the way Absolutely. it was too. And, uh, you know, you started managing full-time in 77. Tommy won 98 games. Uh, and, of course, you go to back-to-back -back World Series. You lose to New York twice, but it must have been so sweet when you came back in 81 and finally beat the Yankees in that series. It must have been, uh, at, to that point, one of the highlights of your life, Tommy. Well, the highlight of my life, as far as managing was concerned, when I took over the club in 1977, mm -hmm. in 1976, the Cincinnati Reds beat us for about 16 games. And I took over in 1977, and I went all over the country speaking, saying the Reds will never beat the Dodgers again. <laughs> and by golly, they didn't. We beat them that year. We beat them by about 12 games. And then we beat them again the next year so. We we you know we responded to uh, to the team that we had to beat it was the Cincinnati Reds. That was the big red machine Some in seventy six. Some of the best baseball we've ever seen. Yeah, but we dismantled it. Yes, you did. And uh, again, uh, it was due to Mr. Lasorda's leadership. Again, some of his awards: Tony, uh, Manager of the Year in eighty one, mm -hmm. seventy seven, uh, Baseball Manager of the Year in eighty eight. Sporting News Co-Manager of the Year in 88, etc. But uh, I was also talking to Tony, Tommy, about your relationship with Fernando Valenzuela. Now, 1980, this 19-year-old comes up, takes the world by storm. We were glued to the TV we sets. Were. We were. And uh, every time he took the mound, it, 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 to me it seemed that you really took him under your wing, I mean, you spoke fluent Spanish. I just wanted to get your memories of a very young Fernando Valenzuela. Well, he was very young. He couldn't speak one word of English. Mm -hmm. And I had to work hard to keep him a, a lot of times when the press was following him everywhere. They wouldn't give him a chance to rest and do something that uh, he didn't have to do. So, consequently... I helped him. I maintained his uh, his times that he could go out and talk to the press. Now he can talk to people and whatever because he couldn't speak any English. He always had to have an interpreter. Mm -hmm. So that was the thing with him. He started out pitching. He won. He pitched seven shutouts and and was rookie of the year and most valuable play in the Cy Young Award. It was it was amazing to watch. It, it was uh, incredible. A, a guy that young and throwing the screwball, Tommy. It was on the TV, um, making batters look crazy at such a young age. It, it was Fernando Mania. It was uh, one of the highlights of my viewing pleasure back mm -hmm. then. And uh, man, sure it was to be. I just think he was uh, just a young pup out of Mexico. Yeah, and pitching uh, great baseball in the major leagues. It was a phenomenal pitcher. Oh. It was so great to watch, even from the East Coast. It was just amazing. Tony, question? And, Tom, you know, you've been in a million of them, conferences at the mound when uh, you're coming out to take out the pitcher. And I imagine you've heard some stories. Uh, would you care to share a couple? <laughs> well, I tell you, Doug Rowe in the World Series. Well, we were I went right. out to take him out at about the fourth inning. He said, wait a minute, Tommy. He says, you can't take me out now. I said, why not? <laughs> I said, you, 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 you're not getting anybody out. And he said, well, the batter up there is a left-hander. I said, yeah, well, those three guys on bases were left-handers. Why don't you get them out? You're out of the game. So that's it. <laughs> that's as good as it gets. And, uh, yeah, we remember some of the conversations with Rao. It was, it was great stuff. But... Uh... Yeah, and then, uh, you know, I fast forward to the 88 World Series, Tommy. You beat Oakland 4-1. And what I remember mostly, of course, was Oral Hershiser, who pitched 18 innings and gave up seven hits. Uh, yeah. He was basically unhittable. Uh, you know, a, a guy that kind of I thought was underrated, soft-spoken, but one hell of a pitcher, Tommy. 
Well, he, he, you know, I hate to say this, but I, he, when I brought him up, he didn't have what I wanted to see in him. Hmm. And I had to put it in him, and I had to make him a, 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 a be mean on the mound. And uh, he he got to be real mean and got tough on the mound, and he became an outstanding pitcher. He became known as a bulldog. Yes. And, and that's due well, to... Well, that uh, was the year Jay Howell had the pine tar, right? During the series, and yeah. then Oral had to Yeah, that was the series yeah. with the bats. Right. Yeah. But, uh, but Hershey's... Uh, he got suspended for three games. <clears throat> but yeah. I told the president of the league, I said, uh, I talked to a, a chemist last night, and he told me pine tar is a, a liquid form of rosin. Mm. I said, you put rosin in the glove, you put it in the bat, you do everything with it. Yeah. So he, he took the suspension down from three days to do. I never knew a chemist in my life. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know any either, Tom. <laughs> no, not not in our walk here. But uh, you know, and and, and uh, you know those seventy teams, the the teams during the seventies, that core infield, Tommy of Garvey, Lopes, Russell, and Say. To me, we watched them so often. They were together for so long. They seemed to take their jobs incredibly seriously and were incredibly professional. I'm sure they had their fun, but they seemed to really do it in business-like fashion. I converted three of them mm. uh, to, to one that, not their natural position. That's right. Bobby was a third baseman when we signed him. Russell was a center fielder when we signed him. Lopes was a center fielder when we signed him, and Penguin, I left him alone. He he, he had what it takes and everything, but I had to get those guys to get get the uh, feeling of uh, being a Dodger. Yeah, and it worked out well. I do remember uh, Garvey as uh, you know a, 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 an infielder playing yes, around the yes. diamond, but uh, it became an incredible first baseman. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's amazing he some sure of the did. great moves that Mr. Lasorda did that worked out. Uh, again, we have a few minutes left with Tommy Lasorda. T Tony, you know, and Tom, the the listing of players that played under you that became managers: Dusty Baker, Mike Scotia, Kirk Gibson. Uh, Renicky, Bobby Valentine. Um, did you Davey see? Lopes. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, to, uh, uh, what's his name? Phil Green. Phil. Yeah. And he more. played for me. He, he managed. Uh, I yeah. think it was Milwaukee. And uh, also, uh, let's see. Dusty Baker played for me, and he managed in the major leagues. Yeah. And and. Uh, a couple more guys. I had a lot of guys that uh, that play for you, managing in the big leagues. Mm. That um, was a that was a credit to them, and it made me feel good to be part of them. That that's great. Did you see these characteristics when uh, they were players? Did they show themselves to be leaders that one day would be managers? Yes, sir. They did. They. Uh, I thought they would be become managers. I recommend them to a lot of teams. To be be big league managers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one time I had eleven guys managing in the big leagues that that had played for me. Wow, and that's a testament to uh, a lot of the things that they were taught earlier. And uh, you know, we've had a lot of your ex players on this show, Tommy. Uh, a few of them were Steve Sachs, Al Downing, Jerry Royce, Tommy John. They've all uh, Jack Perconti. They've all come on and, and spoke so highly of you, and they always bring up the fact of, you know, bleeding Dodger blue. We hear that expression so often. When did that first kind of materialize? And I, I know you still do it, but it became such a catchphrase in the 70s. Uh, you were yeah, well, when I started managing, I tried to instill it to the ball players that we signed that the Dodgers were the best organization <laughs> in baseball and for them to be able to get the pitch in Dodger Stadium or play in Dodger Stadium was their goal and we would help them to get there so I had uh, I think it was I had about 60 some guys who played for me that went off and played in the major leagues yeah that's impressive stuff and uh you know, we, Tony and I uh, also talk often of guys that uh, 
probably went down a wrong path. You came across a couple of them, Tommy, a la Daryl Strawberry and Steve Howe. Such uh, sad, great Yeah, not bad. Two, two very, very nice guys. And the they talent... broke my heart when I saw what happened to them. Oh, man. You know, I loved them as players, mm -hmm. and I loved them as friends, and uh, they were their families, and and it just was a tough, tough thing to, yeah. to control. They, they got started on stuff like that, and boys, I try to tell the young kids, stay away from that stuff. All it'll do you is ruin you, you're, you're every way. With the talent they had, Tommy, uh, yeah. those uh, it, it was scary, the type of talent they had, Both and the um, they just couldn't handle it. Tony? And, Tom, you know, I used to love when the camera came into the um, Dodger Clubhouse and they showed you behind your desk, and you had all the pictures, and so many pictures you had of Frank Sinatra. What was it like having Frank Sinatra as a friend? <laughs> Frank Sinatra was one of the nicest guys I had ever met. He had a heart of gold. But if he didn't like you, watch your house, stay away from it, because he, he was a bitter man with people that he didn't like. Ah. And uh, he, uh, what he said when I first met him in Chicago, he said, you should be the manager of the Dodgers. And I said, God willing, maybe one day I will be. And the, he said, "Well, when you when you become the manager of the Dodgers, I'll come out and sing the national anthem for you." Wow! And he never done it after anybody. He never done it for anybody. And so when I got the job, he said, "Called. When do you want me to?" I said, "Opening day. I'm starting out opening day, and you're starting out with me." Boy. So that was it. So we've been friends till the day he passed away. And Tony and I talk about him constantly, we him. possibly, the we believe, one of the greatest entertainers of all time. And, and uh, it's just... Without a doubt. It's scary. Without a doubt. Yeah, it's scary when we just he hear him sing. He can do it all. He can do movies. He can do yeah. music. He can do it all. He was a great guy. And uh, a bunch of guys that had a lot of fun in life. And they're all gone now. Yeah. It's amazing. And one guy who remains, I have to ask you about Vince Scully, uh, a graduate <laughs> of Fordham where I attended, Tommy, and he's still going strong. You guys are the two longest tenure you Dodgers. You inspire us daily, both of you. He is an amazing guy. Yeah, I know you're... Benny, the Benny's the best at what he does. Oh, yeah. I wasn't the best at what I did. That's the difference. He was great, and uh, his announcing was super, and he's a super guy. I've never seen a guy turn down an autograph or an interview or whatever. He's such a great fella, and uh, he and I have the same amount of years with the Dodgers. <laughs> we both have 50, 55 years. It, it's it's amazing, and, and we marvel at the fact that he sounds like he did 30 years ago, Tom. It, it gives us chills. Oh, yeah, he's the best. Without a doubt, he's the best. It, it's it's scary good. Tony, one more. You know, Tom, and I'm going to bring you into today with today's pitchers. And we watched all your great pitchers. We watched Jerry Royce pitching his guts out. He was also on the show. Mm -hmm. We watched Tommy John. These guys gave everything they had. Now we see pitchers leaving five innings to a standing ovation. And they're getting oh, hurt. Somebody, somebody's impressed them that six innings is a quality start. Where I told them a quality start is nine innings. And a win. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense to We're me. with you. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Yeah, it, uh, um, you think we'll ever see it come back to where it was? I guess not. Well, they can make it happen. They can make it happen. The managers, were, they see somebody do something. You see them throw water on the people getting interviewed. I think that that's lousy. Person has suits on and dresses on, yeah. and these guys are out there pouring stuff all over them. If you want to do that? Do it in the clubhouse. Yeah, and yeah. And Tom, Tommy, I, I have to ask you about your election to the Hall of Fame in '97. Again, uh, this you were inducted with Nellie Fox, Phil Negro, and the old player Willie Wells at the time. Uh, 
I mean, it, it's 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 a foregone fact that it was a, a very special day for you. But what what do you remember specifically about that day? It's probably your entire baseball life and your childhood all came in front of your eyes that day. Well, the person that called me, that's what the greatest thing that could ever happen to me mm -hmm. was Ted Williams. Wow. He called me and said, Tommy, I thought I was the only guy that loved you in that meeting. He says, everybody loved you, and that's why they put you in the Hall of Fame. Uh, that's uh, baseball royalty right mm -hmm. there, getting a yeah, call from certain. Teddy Ball game, right, Tony? You have a final question right. for him? You know, and Tom, I'm curious, the great career you've had all with the blue, scouting, managing in the minor leagues, third base coach, manager with the big club, executive. Um, if I were to ask you if there's any one thing you would change, you would tell me no, but is there still like one game where you did something that's like, if only I did this, the game would have ended a different way? Uh, is there a thought like that every once in a while? Oh, yeah, that's what you always <laughs> think about. You think you made mistakes, but... You see, them people see, they see people second guess you, and I try to tell them a second guesser is someone who doesn't know anything about the first guess, yeah. and a second guesser is someone who needs two guesses to get it right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's thank you. I'm going to use explains that. it, but again. <laughs> The career of Tommy Lasorda, almost 1,600 victories as a manager, the two world tidy titles, the four pennants, uh, and uh, we can go on and on. Uh, Tommy, it's just been such a pleasure to speak with you. Um, we hope that you're in good health. We continue to... Oh, I, I, I enjoy talking to you guys, and thanks for having me. Oh, it, it's our, the, our it, honor, It sir. was an honor, sir, and again, uh, we continue to do the great work that you do, and again, uh, it was our honor to uh, speak with you tonight. Uh, please stay well, in touch. Call me again if you want your ratings to go up. <laughs> <laughs> they just did. They just okay? did. They just did, and uh, again, uh, our best to okay. everyone out there. Thank Give you, us, guys. You take care, Tommy. Thank, Thank you, care. Tommy. Good night. Good night.